Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Palm Tree Sports. My name is Corey Pujols, your host. It is brought to you and powered, as always, by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome again, guys. I am so glad to have you here on this wonderful Saturday afternoon. Down here in sunny Tampa, Florida, guys, it is, uh, it's been around 86 to 90 out here lately, and it, it's absolutely beaming. So uh, I don't know if you guys are getting sun wherever you're listening to me from, but it is very sunny down here. The weather is, uh, I guess you could say, perfect for the sports that are going on right now, and that's what we're going to get into. But first, I just want to uh, send a huge shout out to my family, my mother and my father, for being able to uh, help support me in this area. Um, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to be able to do the show today, and they they were very helpful in, in getting me back on track um, so that I could I could uh, do what needs to be done here. So shout out to them, Dad. I'm sure you're probably going to hop on sometime soon if you do. Thank you. We love you. Um, now let's get on to what you guys are here to talk about, and that's the sports, guys. So you know, there's not always as much going on right now at this time, and yeah, I'm always going to go ahead and put that disclaimer out there just because I don't want I don't want the information to come across as if it's lackluster. We just have to remember that in the off season for a lot of teams and then also for spring practice for a lot of teams, there's not going to be a lot of headlines, right? There's a lot of nitty nitty and grittiness that goes down during this time. And so we're just going to have to kind of bear with it for a little bit. But that's OK, guys, because don't forget, there are other uh, exceptions to these, such as for the NFL, perhaps if you're if you're you know, been watching the NFL for so long, and now there's the XFL, right? So then we got some pro football still that we were able to watch, right? And and just take it like that, you know? So it's a beautiful thing, but we are definitely going to be covering Florida sports here, guys. And yes, absolutely. Um, the biggest thing about Florida sports is is really the, the training that takes place down here. So I'll give you an example. Back in 2006, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers hosted the the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. It was a uh, it was a 1 p.m. start time. Heat index was 95. I think it was. Heat index was 95. Um, Donovan McNabb, he a uh, great quarterback. Okay, first and foremost, that man was a terror to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a long time. But he was not prepared for that heat. And uh, for those who saw that game, saw what happened. For those who didn't, long story short, he vomited uh, mid-game. Literally mid-game, he was under center and boom. So that is one of the biggest things that separates the contest of sports, whatever sport your sport is, right? Football, basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, hockey, whatever. That's what separates the talent from down here, right? in other places in the country. With that being said, there is a counteraction to that, and that is our teams do struggle in the cold. When you are primed for heat, the cold is your enemy. And for a long time, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could not win games when the temperature was below 30, I believe it was. So keep that in mind, guys. That's also something that, that plays a big part of the sports down here in Florida. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and talk about some of the things that's been going on with them. For anybody who has followed Tampa Bay, I'm sure you saw the news about Ryan Suckup being released. That sucks. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. As a diehard Buccaneer fan, the two names that hurt the most losing this offseason are Ryan Suckup because he fixed our kicking problem. And that's a problem that's kind of been had around the entire NFL. So take that into consideration. Whoever picks up Ryan Suckup is picking up a tremendous kicker and I wish him nothing but the best. I wish we were able to keep him. I think we should have kept him. That, in my opinion, was a mistake. The second big one, and this one might even be a bigger mistake, is Mike Edwards. Okay, Mike Edwards is a ball hawk safety with tremendous football IQ. Does not get beat very often and he played in the South in Kentucky. So he is very well aware of the style of play down here and also again going back to the heat and such he is primed for such so um congratulations to sean murphy bunting on his new contract um he's a tremendous corner i think he has a lot of upside he just hasn't been the same since his injury and if he can come back around to having the ball skills that he had the year that we won the super bowl if you guys uh saw any of the highlights from the playoff run that tempe had uh Sean Murphy Bunting was responsible for the uh, the first turnovers of each of those first three playoff games. So 
the Washington Commanders, followed by the Saints, followed by the Packers. Sean Murphy Bunting had a pick on all three of them. So, you know, that's that's really a, a good ball player that they're getting, especially if he can return to form. In the good news, right, now that's the bad news. Here's the good news. Uh, Levante David is staying in Tampa Bay. Now, that is a beautiful thing. Uh, the only other team that was on his radar was the Buffalo Bills, but there was going to need to be something to be done there for him to go. Um, he's going to stay here, and he is now reaching the pinnacle of Tampa Bay um I guess you could say legendary status here in Tampa Bay. I want to say the pinnacle of it, but he's he's definitely reached legendary status in our franchise. We have only had four players. All right, so our franchise came into the league 1976. Okay, so you guys can do the math. In that amount of time, we've only had four players to play 12 years or more here. Okay, and uh, of course, in recent memory, the first guy that you can probably think of is, is going to be uh, Rondé Barber, right, who just went into the Hall of Fame. So there's a little, you know, um, a little beautiful moment there between uh, the vets and Levante, I believe, played with uh, he played with Rondé Barber. So there's a great conversation to be had there. He'll be in the ring of honor one day and he will definitely be a Hall of Famer. He's got a ring. He's a tremendous ball player with great ball skills. He doesn't miss tackles very often, and when he blitz, he gets to the quarterback most of the time. So we're very happy to have Levante back. He's on a one-year deal, and I'm sure that if he doesn't retire after this year, that he'll probably stay with us again. Uh, I really, um, you know, I really hope that we're able to keep him. And yes, um, reliable kickers are so hard to come across these days. And then with Ryan Suckup, he also had um, a decent sized leg too. So, you know, 50 wasn't out of his, his ballpark, you know what I'm saying? So that's also one of the other things that we're going to be missing, especially since we live in a league now where teams score at will. We've seen Buffalo, Kansas city, uh, the Eagles, uh, the Packers, well, before Aaron Rodgers uh, left, um, but you get what I'm saying. We've seen a lot of teams that can score with less than 20 seconds remaining, whether they have to go to length of the field or not. All right. Now, that seems weird, but it's true. We've seen it. OK, the Dolphins. So, guys, uh, that's a big deal, you know, all the way around for, you know, the league to have a good kicker. And that's just something that we're going to be missing out on. Uh, another signed player comes from the Rams, uh, Greg Gaines who is a very good defensive tackle interior. Uh, we lost Akeem Nunes Roaches to uh, free agency, signed a three-year deal I mm, with the, was it the, the Giants, I believe it was. So the Giants got them a very decent interior lineman. However, um, that left the door open for somebody for somebody else to come in, which would be Greg Gaines. He's going to be paired very nicely with Vita Vea. For those who know, Vita Vea may be the best defensive tackle in all of football at any given time, especially when healthy. The man is an absolute stud just a rock and i met him before and he's every bit as big as he looks on tv in real life and his hair is every bit his hair on tv that it is in real life so uh shout out to um to them and uh to obviously again sean murphy bunting and mike edwards pursuing their futures with other football teams i believe sean murphy bunting signed with the titans so i think you guys will see him there mike edwards uh, I do not remember. I'll have to go look and see where he signed, but he did sign, if I'm not mistaken. His, he should have gotten more. For the record, guys, um, at this present moment, the best team in the NFC South is probably the Carolina Panthers. And the reason why I can say this is because Derek Carr does not fix the Saints quarterback problem. It more or less just shifts the skill and ability from what they had in Jameis Winston to now... You see what I'm saying, Derek Carr? Uh, Derek Carr has has the ability to lift that team up. However, that team is not very deep anywhere. So if they run into any type of injury problems, their seasons will yeah, their season will be pretty much done. You know, pretty much at the first major injury that they have. So uh, if they can stay healthy, they'll be fine. But I think, guys, if if you guys really want to know what's going on, uh, the Panthers may be very well the best team in the NFC South, and that's a scary thing. And if you're not if you're not sure why I'm saying that, go look at who they've signed since the off season started. All right, just go back and look at some of those signings. I'm telling you, they're flying under the radar super hard, and people need to pay attention now. Um, Dustin Hopkins is, I believe I watched him in college and he is a, he is a good talent. Um, 
we'll see what happens there because there's so many names still being linked to Tampa Bay. With See, the biggest issue is the cap. If the cap had not been, let's say the cap had been half, right? So it was 55 mil over. Let's say it was 27.5 mil over. Okay, guys. Um, this wouldn't be a problem at all. You see what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure we would have been able to maneuver a lot less evasively to create more space and room for, for, for the people that it mattered for. And unfortunately, we were not able to do that. So that's why you see all these players leaving. And it, it really sucks as a Tampa fan. It really sucks. But it is what it is. Uh, now, obviously, that means we're going to have to draft a kicker. This is going to be our third time drafting a kicker in the last 15 years, guys. So just keep that in mind. All right, keep keep that in mind. That's kind of a sad thing when you have kickers who have been on teams for 10 years. So I rest my case. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the Jags, though. That's everything that I have for Tampa Bay. Again, being in the offseason and not having a lot of money to be able to spend means limited moves. Uh, every team has gone through it at some point in time, except for probably the Ravens. I don't think the Ravens ever had that problem. I think they, they just draft tremendous. They That's between the Ravens, the Steelers, um, I – History would say the Raiders, and then history would also say New England, that those are some of the best drafting teams in NFL history. If you go back and look at, you know, a lot of the talent that they were able to uh, pull up. Um, And with that being said, it's like you want that. That's what you want to find. You know what I'm saying? And and not being able to find is just extremely rough. Um, So, again, having to draft a kicker, it is what it is. And we'll go from there. But Jags. You guys signed uh, Dearness Johnson, okay? Very, very, very big signing there. I like that signing. I think that was, uh, I think that's going to turn your one punch into a one-two punch in the backfield, which is something that you guys, I don't think, had ever. Yeah, ever, Jags. I don't, not not, not at least on, not on that level when you have, you know, um, a proven quarterback on your side. You got a proven quarter, uh, a wide receiver out there, Christian, um, uh, Christian Kirkson, I believe it is. Uh, you have, you know, um, you have uh, ETM in the backfield. So you guys are loaded. And then now you're adding depth. So that means you're going to be able to be more successful on plays that I'll put it to you like this. How many times have we seen second down and four plays go for three yards and now it's third and one, right? Like we see that at least once a game, it seems like, and then I mean, like across every game, imagine turning that second down into a first down, right? So your game plan, your game plan, planning and uh, play calling changes immediately after that, right? And now you can take a shot, or now you can call a trick play, or now you can catch defense slipping, or now you can go to that wide receiver that's been saying, hey, man, I'm one-on-one on the outside. This defensive back can't guard me. Put it over the top. So for those of you who have played football, especially wide receiver or tight end position, you guys know that happens so many times in games where uh, you, you're beating your guy and they just haven't seen it yet. So that's something that we're going to start to see most likely coming out of the Jaguars. The only other information I have that as far as relative to the Jaguars is Calias Campbell was on the fence about rejoining the Jags. Now, for those who don't know, Calias Campbell, I believe, started his career with the Jags and then he left. So, excuse me, my apologies. With that being said, he's on the fence about the Jags, but he did name a couple other teams that he was going to be looking at. And so we'll see what happens there. If he does happen to sign, I'll come back next week and have that information for you on the docket. With that being said, again, not much going on right now for the Jags. They spent a lot of money last offseason. So again, I don't suspect that they're going to do too much here, but I wouldn't be surprised if they make one or two moves before the, the deadline is up. That's for the Jags. Now, the Finns, on the other hand, they got Jalen Ramsey. I mentioned this last week. The reason why I mention it is because for those who don't know, Jalen Ramsey is a good cornerback, but I don't think he's as good as everybody thinks he is, okay? I watched him against elite wide receivers. He, mm, he's not the best against elite wide receivers. He's not. I can name a couple of the cornerbacks that I think do better. Um, uh, Xavier, I can't remember what his last name is, but the guy that he's actually playing with now down in Miami, I think Xavier Howard, I think it is, um, is actually a better cornerback than him, in my opinion. And there's Darius Slay in the Eagles. Well, he left the Eagles, I think it was. And there's a few other guys out there that I'd be uh, hard-pressed not to mention. But you get what I'm saying. Uh, I think he'll be good for them. I don't think he's going to be uh, that much more of a game-changer than what they already had. And then also, 
ever since he got tore up by Mike Evans, he hasn't quite been the same. So we'll see what happens with the Jalen Ramsey project. Good luck to Jalen Ramsey. I don't like him, but good luck to him. Uh, now, they also signed uh, Justin Bethel. All right, so that was that was a re-sign, which is big. You love to, to keep your pieces together. I think the biggest loss that they've had is definitely Mike Gusecki. Uh, they will definitely be missing Mike Gusecki. With that being said, I think everything else that the Finns have done in the offseason has been phenomenal. And if Tua can stay healthy as long as everything points straight uh, for the Dolphins, I think that they will run away with the AFC East. Uh, there is a logical reason behind that. Of course, the Patriots are still there, but the Patriots just showed how – struggling they are last year and I don't think that just because they struggled last year they're gonna bounce back and have some absolutely phenomenal year they no longer have Tom Brady Mac Jones is not Tom okay he's not and when you don't have Tom you have to move away from what worked with Tom because nobody else is Tom so I hope that Obviously, Bill Belichick can get his act together with, you know, and signing Mike Gusecki was absolutely phenomenal, you know, stealing him away from the Finns. But with that being said, um, that's the biggest thing I've seen from the Patriots for the most part. Then I look at the Buffalo Bills, who would be the team that I think would give Miami the biggest problem. Miami was already beating Buffalo last year, so they've already proven they can do it. And then Buffalo loses uh, their top receiver. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. I told everybody this last year when when uh, the Packers lost Devontae Adams, that Aaron Rodgers would not be the same man, that they wouldn't win the division, ETC, I rest my case. So there's going to be a similar thing here uh, with the Buffalo Bills. Although I do believe Josh Allen is a phenomenal talent, and he still does have the majority of his team around him, not having your number one target forces you to change your football skill um, and apply it more towards your dedication and understanding that that's not the only football player on your team. I'm not saying that that's the viewpoint, but with young quarterbacks, we've seen how they struggle when they lose their top target. And that's one of the things that has been the, um, the deficit to a lot of young quarterbacks to keep them from becoming the next elite guy. Right. And the only exception to this rule would be Patrick Mahomes. Um, we've seen what happens uh, across the league, both AFC and NFC. So good luck to the Miami Dolphins. I think, again, that they will run away with the division, and I think they will have a strong case in the playoffs as uh, you know the second, second or third best team there in the AFC. I obviously have one and two as the, um, the Chiefs one, Bengals two. So after that, I could see Miami sliding into that third spot. Keep up the good work, Miami. Uh, we'll go from there next week, see what else they're able to conjure up and what else they're able to do in the offseason. But until then, let's go ahead, take a quick break. And when we get back, we'll talk uh, what's going on in the NCAA. There's not a lot going on there. Again, spring training just kicking off and whatnot. So we'll dive into a little detail there. And then we'll hit the uh, uh, NBA, MLB, NHL. We'll talk a little MMA since we got a fight night on ESPN tonight. All right, guys. So keep it locked here at Palm Tree Sports. My name is Corey Pujols. Your host is brought to you by IE Sports Radio, as always. Um, and your direct feed for all that is sports. So, guys, just keep it locked here. I'll be back in two minutes, okay? What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy awesome. White tea. <laughs> they are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And how beautiful is that? All over. Here on the East Coast, there on the West Coast, up north, Midwest, Pacific Midwest, Texas. A little bit of everything going on here at IE Sports Radio, and I love it, and I hope you love it too. But welcome back to Palm Tree Sports. Again, my name is Corey Pujols, your host, and it's brought to you empowered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Guys, let's go ahead and get into this college bit, right? So again, I mentioned earlier, there's not a lot going on in college because everybody just started spring training. And as you guys know, in college, it's walk through after walk through after walk through after walk through. So what that means is when you have when you have preparation for pros, it comes in different facets based off the sport that you're playing. So for basketball, you're going to be playing pro, you know, level style basketball, which is why you can see a lot of young players come in and directly have an impact. I remember the first year Kyrie Irving was in the league. He was absolutely nuts. LeBron James, nuts. Kobe had to sit a little bit, but when he got on the court, he was nuts. I rest my case, guys, versus the NFL, where... There's small things, the details, right? Like, and every sport has details, but with football, the details truly make the difference. It's truly a game of inches. And I know you guys have heard that somewhere. So let's go ahead and dive into what's going on there. I'm actually going to go backwards this way, guys, because believe it or not, FSU and the Canes are in the exact same boat. They've hired all their positions that they were uh, lacking. For Miami, it was defensive coordinator and head coach. For FSU, it was just head coach. Um, they were able to go ahead and solve those things. And once they solved them, basically, we just had to stand back and wait for their team to hit the field, which both teams did today. Um, FSU hit the field shortly after Miami did. So Miami was there on the field first for their first uh, spring scrimmage, which means, you know, kind of walking through the game, what they're going to expect on Saturday afternoons, especially that uh, college, you know, they play All throughout the week. So for those who don't watch a lot of college football, first things first, college football is more exciting than NFL football. That's the first thing. Secondly, college football, they play Monday through Sunday, okay, whenever it's good for them. So you could potentially be watching a football game uh, every day of the week. I think we actually had that last year. Dad put that in the comments, if you may. I believe we had an 11-day stretch of college football where there was a college football game every day towards the end of the year last year. I was excited about that. I watched a good amount of those games, okay? So with that being said, um, like I said, FSU, Canes, both start their spring scrimmaging. And again, like I said, all that really means is they're getting people into position. They're making sure that they're they're walking through the game literally from the tunnel walkout um, to stretch or my bad stretch tunnel walkout. Um, first, second quarter, situational awareness, just basically getting to their landmarks and addressing them. So FSU, Canes, congratulations for getting back on the field again, guys. I know y'all are happy. I know it's been a minute. So get out there, work a sweat, you know, uh, practice, hone your skills, bring it back. Because when it's time to play the Gators, I want to, I want us to beat y'all at y'all best. I don't want, I don't want y'all losing it and having an excuse. That's the last thing I want. So. As a Gator fan, of course, I'm going to talk a big talk. Why? Well, there's a high standard in Gainesville. Uh, Anthony Richardson, obviously, in the draft, rose his stock hugely at the Combine. And that put a lot of presidents, of course, on the University of Florida. And when speaking of the University of Florida, this team actually has a little bit, just a tiny bit more going on. Um, basically, there's only one other thing to mention. Um, now, the, the Gators are seven spring practices in. OK, and there's a reason for that because of our quarterback room. So we, we signed Graham Mertz and then we have uh, Jack. What's his last name? I can't remember. Jack. 
I can't remember his last name, but he's the third. He's the third in his family. Um, he started the ball game. So for those who didn't watch the ball game, don't watch it. Don't watch it. Yes, Jack Miller the third is his name. There we go. Jack Miller the third. He he has promise and ability. However, a ball game was not the place to try and figure it out. So hopefully this spring training can be exactly what he needs. Um, especially since we're going to need a backup. Graham Mertz is most likely going to end up the starter. Jack is going to have to be able to come in and play football when when Graham can't, especially if he can't, right? As in, you know, injury or something to actually sideline him for some weeks. So hopefully those two guys can get on the same page and really develop themselves. Uh, some A few minor notes as far as the Gators are concerned, just for big name purposes. Uh, all the Gators will be familiar with tight end Keon Zipper. Had a, had a very good year last year and a decent year before that. However, he was injured at practice. I don't know the extent of his injury because that injury took place, was it yesterday, I think it was? So it was yesterday, yesterday. it might have been today, actually. But with that being said, uh, we'll have to wait and see where, obviously, that injury takes him. And then um, pretty Ricky, number one wide out at Florida. It's looking pretty good. He's been running his routes. They're crisp. He's getting open. Hopefully, the defense can clamp down and show us that we they have some skills, too. Heading into this season, that's going to be the big question about the Gators is, what do they present on defense? On offense, we're here and there. I mean, we have, we have our moments, but if we can't play defense... What does it matter if we have an offense? With that being said, 27 new scholarships, five walk-ons. There's going to be somebody there that's going to help make an impact. We'll just have to wait and see you know, who it's going to be. Now, again, like I said, I did not have a lot for college football. However, for college basketball in the chat, um, my friend Terry actually brought up a very good point. Miami, five seed again, knocking off a one seed. Dad, if you could also put that in the chat, how many times so far – since this uh, approach to the uh, Final Four has started, let's forget about Sweet 16, the Final Four has started, that we've seen a five knock off a one. I think it's been four, five times, four or five times now. Guys, this is unprecedented, okay? Absolutely nuts. That's why they call it March Madness, guys. So congratulations to Miami. Again, FSU and Florida both played horrible um, basketball for college this year. Have a bunch of players trying to get into the, the transfer portal, leave, go somewhere else, perhaps. Miami is the one team in Florida that is shining bright right now under the lights, and I just wish them all the luck because, again, at this point, somebody's got to represent. Miami's doing a very good job after knocking off. What was that, Utah they knocked off? Congratulations, guys. Great uh, great quality win, great team win, and uh, just keep it moving. Keep on winning, guys. Let's see y'all make it to the Final Four and go from there, yeah? Now, as far as... Uh, the NBA is concerned, okay, um, yes, FAU in the Elite Eight is crazy, is this their first time, I believe it is, also making it there, so that's, did not see that coming at all, and I'm happy for them, you know, uh, Florida Atlantic University, they never really received a lot of attention being in Orlando, Right, because they're just they're they're in North Orlando over there, and basically for anybody who's ever been to Florida or knows anything about Florida, Florida's really um situated four different ways. There's the Panhandle, which has a huge military base. There's the top of Florida, Duval, stand up, Gainesville, stand up, and that is all college. That is all college. Okay, um, they got FSU, got FAMU, they got uh the Gators. So there's a lot. With that being said, you get to Central Florida, right? And then you get Orlando. Orlando is like the big deal, all right? Yeah, we got Daytona Beach over there, but it's Daytona Beach and then there's the D Daytona 500. Those are basically the only two reasons why people go over there. Then you have uh, Orlando, which is essentially a um, it's a hub of fun, right? So it's a, it's a universal hub of fun. There's a little bit of everything there. I, I literally have been there countless times. And we've done so much different stuff. Like I Ripley's, believe it or not, the museum, uh, just all kind of stuff there. So then Tampa, Florida kind of aligns with that central Florida because it's just an hour to the left. That's it. It's just an hour to the left, literally. Um, you know, you know, you got to go a little south, but you get what I'm saying. So Tampa is the other side to that coin, where Orlando only has essentially the Orlando Magic as a big, you know, team. Um, Tampa Bay has the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have the Bolts, which ugh, we'll talk about them in a little bit, guys. And then we have the Rays. So we have 
three major teams, and out of those three teams, two of them have won multiple world championships. The Rays, unfortunately, have lost in uh, two World Series, and uh, one of them they got swept. So we love our Rays, and we want them to get on that wagon with us, and, and hopefully they will, right, guys? Hopefully they will. Now, in the NBA, the Orlando Magic, again, are in Orlando. However, Miami has the Miami Heat. So as we were just talking about the Miami Hurricanes knocking off the one C Utah, congratulations to them. We have the Miami Heat playing phenomenal basketball. I'm about to get into that right now. And then, of course, you have the Miami Dolphins, right? So a lot of good teams there. <clears throat> Excuse me. My apologies, guys. Now, the Heat, yes, the Heat 6 seed currently 40 and 34. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, guys. We needed them to start playing basketball. They were. They, they got healthy again. That's what happened, guys. Let's talk about that. They got healthy. See, when you're struggling and you're not healthy, you can blame it on the not healthy part, right? I said, hey, listen, guys, when you when you when everybody comes back from injury, y'all are gonna have to like ball out, right? Like, and 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 Eric Spolster is a tremendous coach. I say this every time. Eric Spolster is a tremendous coach. There's plenty of talent. Kyle Lowry. Um. There's a uh, uh, Jimmy Butler. JB. And obviously, there's so much more guys on the team. Obviously, I'm not going to go ahead and name them all, but you get what I'm saying. Essentially, they're going to have to do that. And look what they're doing: 40 and 34, which is good. Um, they're plus six where they were at 500. Okay, so keep up the good work. Uh, another lights out game for the Heat tonight, right? 7 p.m. They're going against the Nets. Uh, that's gonna, and I think they're hosting the Nets. So that's the good part. They're hosting the Nets. The bad part is there's only one game separating these two teams. Okay, the Nets are 39 and 34. If the Nets win this game, I believe they jump over and then that would basically put the Heat at seven. Right. So that's where the things are at. The, the, the East is kind of it's layered right now is the East and in and, and all areas of the layer are the team struggling except for the very bottom. And we'll talk about the very bottom in a little bit, but not right now. Not yet. With that being said, also, they have won four of their last five, which is tremendous behind a lot of good defense and uh, team, just teamwork, overall teamwork. Like a lot of the time we watch basketball games and we see one of two things, right? We see Luka Magic and Kyrie Irving on the same team, which is just two powerhouse scores that's going to be hard to stop. And then you see teams like the Nets, who lost a lot of their stars but have good role players, okay, and can still get the job done. Uh, you look at the 76ers. The 76ers, James uh, Harden is getting older. He is no longer the guy that he was five, seven years ago. Uh, obviously, Joel Embiid is an absolute monster. But again, like I said, it, it kind of seems like he's he's carrying that team a little bit. And it doesn't have to be that way. You got Boston, probably the best overall team in the league, at least from a team perspective, right? They have tremendous defense. They've been together for a couple of years now, uh, and two of the best young players in the NBA has to offer. So that's just an example of what I mean by the difference between these two-man, one-man, two-man shows and actual great teamwork. You can get there with both. You can get there with both, but, you know, guys, let's let's see what, what these Heat can do. The next game after that is going to be a Raptor, so if they can win this game, they have the potential to go up plus eight, which would move them into fifth place, I believe it is. Uh, the Raptors are not playing good basketball. They're rocking a 36 and 38 record. That game is going to be Tuesday at 7.30 okay, p.m., so if you're looking for something to watch on Tuesday, there you go. Again, the Heat played the Nets tonight at 8 p.m. If you're looking for something else to watch tonight, I'm going to give you a couple other things to check out, too, because that's not the only thing coming on tonight. So I'll, I'll definitely give you the rest of that towards the end of part of the show. However, the Magic, OK, uh, the Magic, they're not they're not their season's over. Right. So we talked about this already. They're 31 and 43. They're not I mean, 13th in the in, um, in the East. They're not doing anything. It's time for them to look towards the future. But. For those who are, are, you know, still are following Orlando, at least, you know, to the end of the season, uh, they did beat the Knicks 42-33. That's kind of wild because the Knicks have been playing really good basketball lately. Um, that score was a, a 111-106. to Well, five-point game. You outscored them. Good job, guys. Next game for the Magic will be against the Nets. Now, that game... Uh, obviously, they're going to be coming right after playing the Heat. So they don't have to. That that travel is going to be like if they fly, it'll be an hour and a half, two hour flight at, at 
at worst. At best, it'll be a 45-minute flight, right? Because from Miami to Tampa is about three, three and a half hours driving, okay? And then from Tampa to Orlando is about an hour. So you're talking about maybe four and a half hours. You're going to kill that in about 45 minutes of flight pattern, okay? So we'll see what happens there. Obviously, the again, the, the Nets are rocking the 39 and 34 record. So that's a lot better than what the Magic have. And obviously, the team is a lot better than what the Magic have on paper as well. So, we will see what happens with that game. The Magic quietly have won three of the last four. Again, we're in garbage time for the season, so it is what it is. But, yes, um, season's over for them, so just going to have to look towards next season, and hopefully they can draft well, because there's going to be a couple of kids coming out this year that are going to be really good, so hopefully they can put that to work, make some moves in free agency. We'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what happens for the Magic. Now, uh, to tackle onto this part, yes, uh, the Lakers did beat OKC last night, and they are now at 500 for the first time this season. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, Lakers. I'm so proud of you guys. Uh, Anthony Davis has been absolutely ridiculous, okay? Now, a lot of people, I'm not going to spread over the Lakers, but a lot of people obviously have been, you, you know, eyeballing Anthony uh, during this time to see how he's going to play and if in the absence of LeBron if he can carry this team he has shown that he can do that with LeBron coming back seven games left I think it is eight games seven eight games something like that we'll see what they're able to cook up down there in uh in LA go Lakers go LeBron I'm a huge LeBron James fan for any of those who don't know you guys got to remember he came down to Miami when I was like in high school all right, guys. So, like, yeah, I, I watched basketball. I was in love with basketball. I already knew who he was in Cleveland. But when he decided to come down to Miami, guys, y'all, I was already favoring Miami a little bit more than Orlando growing up because I was also a huge fan of D Wade. So, yeah, needless to say, that was a match made in heaven for me. And, and, and I enjoyed every bit of it. So let's go ahead and take our last break of the evening. When I get back, I'll hit you with some MLB, NHL, MMA, and things to look out for tonight and tomorrow, just in case you're trying to find something to settle on TV with, okay? Thank you guys so much for having it locked here at Palm Tree Sports. Again, my name is Corey Pujols, your host, and it is brought to you by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Keep it locked here, guys. I'll be back in a minute, 30 seconds. Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cale Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans, where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities, underscore I-E-S-R, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. Always want to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Boom. And that's how we do it here at IE Sports Radio. Personally, guys... And I'm going to say this just because I, I know my dad's listening and, and I, I, I love my dad. I love, I love my entire family and I'm very thankful. I hope you guys have a wonderful family and enjoy the time with them because guys, the world is a crazy place right now. I always want to give a little food for thought out there for those who are listening. So here's a little bit um, as we get ready to close out the show. Guys, spend time with your family. And I'm going to continue to say this as much as often, as much as I can. We are in some uncertain times. Hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis, plate shifting. Um, you got the greenhouse effect, burning the ice, raising the sea levels, all kind of crazy stuff going on. Okay, guys, spend time with the people that matter most. There's a movie on Netflix called Don't Look Up. I encourage everybody to go watch it. It's a little bit of a funny movie, but it's definitely a movie that will help put things in perspective. Long story short, the world is ending and everybody knows it. The guy who 
found and predicted that the world was going to be ending basically at the exact moment, he realized that all of this stuff doesn't matter if he's not with the people that it matters most to. So there's some food for thought for you guys. Spend time with your family. And the last thing I want to say is, is actually in regards to IE Sports Radio. I love doing this, guys. I love talking to you guys every Saturday. And this is something that has kind of been passed down, I think, in my genes. My father, you know, he loves doing this, too. And he actually used to do this back in church for us. So I'm very, very happy to be able to be walking in his steps. And, and hopefully I'm making him proud. Now, let's get on to... The news, what you guys came here for, right? Yes, Lightning lost again. Yes, down there, uh, lost four in a row, actually, is what it was. And and, and that's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of burning to watch, especially, I'm going to keep mentioning this, especially after they just returned from a three-year Stanley Cup final. The Lightning looked like they're finally, you know, I hate to say it as a Bolts fan, but I think that they are, are, crumbling under the pressure and the pressure is a mixture of pressures right it's the pressure of being such a successful team since their their, their creation right that's the first struggle but the second struggle is also being so successful in each of the last three years it takes a lot of time it takes a lot a lot a lot of time to recoup from that so guys there's a part of me not not the fan part of me but the human part of me that says guys if you lose out and you don't make the playoffs, it's okay. Take some time. Step away from the game. Recharge your batteries. Refocus. Repurpose. Guys, it's hard to do it every year. Trust me. I, I play all these sports. I have literally played football, basketball, baseball, soccer. I've played tennis. I play street hockey. Can't get on the ice. I don't ice skate. But I love street hockey, okay? And I, and I train in Muay Thai. I love martial arts. Martial arts is probably my second favorite out of them all besides fo football because football was the first thing I fell in love with. Guys, it doesn't matter any of those sports that you play. You need to take time away and recharge those batteries. Also, so that way you can remind yourself just how much you miss and love the game. I'll give you an example. Kobe Bryant. That's the example. I don't have anything else to say. He's a perfect. Every story you've ever heard about him, God rest his soul. He was such a beautiful man, a beautiful, a beautiful soul um, and a beautiful basketball player to watch. But you hear every story about him being the first guy in and the last guy out. That's not on accident. That's because he loves it. So there you go, guys, with there with that example, as far as the bolts. Yes. So uh, you mentioned the Bolts that I'll go ahead and rock with that. So here we go. The Bolts sitting at 42, 26, and 6 right now. Just lost to the Bruins, who are playing probably the best hockey in all of the NHL right now. That was a one that was a one-score putt game. You guys know how I feel about one-score putt games. You gotta win them. Just like in baseball, you gotta win those one-run ball games, guys. There's no excuse. So, with that being said, that drops us again. Four losses um in a row. It <sighs> The team probably hasn't looked more desperate on the ice. That that game against the Bruins was intense. They there were there was a lot of action. There was a lot of uh, uh, jarring, if you will. It almost reminded me of a of an old school '93s Canadians versus like Kings game. You guys, you guys remember that? You, you guys remember how they used to do they. That was the different time in hockey. Let's just say it like what it is. That was a different time. In hockey, those Montreal Canadiens were, were something else. They get you to overtime, and it's over. I think they won like 11 games in overtime that year. That's exactly what I mean when I say uh, uh, the team, the Bruins more specifically, are looking like that. They, they're absolutely phenomenal. Again, 56-11-5 record. Bolts, guys, we were aiming for that, right? We were trying to catch up with the Bruins. Instead, we're sliding backwards. So, heartbreaker there. However, the show must go on. The Hurricanes will be playing against the Bolts Tuesday, March 28th, 7 p.m. In case you're looking for something to watch on Tuesday, there you go. Put it on the ice. I think that'll be a decent game. Uh, the Rays have something to prove. The Hurricanes aren't the best team, but they're not going to just lay down either. So with that being said, there's eight games left in the season. Again, win out. Have a good shot at, at, a, at a high seed right in the playoffs lose out you don't I don't think you make the playoffs if you lose out with eight games remaining so we'll see what happens guys we will see what happens with our bolts you know uh, as far as I'm concerned I believe in them I absolutely love them to pieces and I just really hope that we're able to continue the trend that we've been on but if we cannot hey it's okay again repurpose refocus and let's get back to it next year it won't be long boys it won't be long now 
real quick just to go ahead and comment on this. Yes, Dad, I love you too. And yeah, I am so glad he passed him down. Kobe was a very special player for me. I want to speak on this just for a second. I wasn't a Kobe fan originally when he came into the league. When he came into the league, I was still very young myself. I was probably six years old, I think it was, when he came into the league. So I, I kind of just looked at the game and was like, oh, look, a dunk. You know what I'm saying? I think I was excited about that. Kobe is a savant. Okay, he is a virtuoso for guys who don't know what that means. Basically, he's a genius in his field. Knowing more basketball than Kobe Bryant, the only person I think that knows more basketball than Kobe is LeBron. And there's obviously for those who know LeBron and his kit, the man can play all five positions. He studied the game since he was yay high. Uh, the man is just an absolute mental wizard okay i've seen lebron i've seen clips not just one clip but multiple clips of lebron actually telling the other team what their play was think about that guys for a second it's nuts to be that good kobe bryant was the same way but he's not going to tell you what the play is he's just going to stop the play and you're going to be sitting there looking stupid that was the thing that made kobe a killer and one of the things that i love the most about him so you know, rest in peace, Kobe. We miss you, man. We all miss you, you know, and hey, it is what it is. Um, I would be shocked if the Bolts miss the playoffs too, but it's, it's just a, it's a possibility. Uh, I, I, I have to look at everybody's record again. I, it may be, maybe it's too late actually. I mean, honestly, maybe it is too. I have to go look at everybody's record again and see the things. I know we're sitting at, uh, was it six right now in, in the Atlantic. So, uh, and I know the teams in front of us are all, Teams we've been going back and forth with, aside from the, um, uh, the Bruins, of course, playing the best hockey in, in the NHL, I think, at the moment. So it is what it is, um, especially when you can handle the Bolts. I think the Bruins beat the Bolts multiple times this season. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't say every game, but I'm pretty sure they won most of the games the times they were paired up this season. So that's the part that kind of makes it alarming, especially when dealing with the Bruins. Again, good luck to, to the Bolts. I think that they can do it. However, we've seen crazier things happen in sports now. The Panthers, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, see, what ha we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. That's basically kind of what I was commenting on right there because it's a wild, it's a wild way to the end. Um, 11 points up on the Panthers. 11, 8, 3, 3. Yeah, you're right. That's the numbers. Okay, so you, I will absolutely, I'll definitely give you that, Adam. That is exactly where they're at. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So, um... I think that I think they'll be all right. Yeah, I think they'll be right at this point. Math is mathing, right? Math is mathing. So let's go ahead and talk about the Rays, though, right? So now, again, with the Rays, spring training kind of over their heads, but only for a little bit, guys, only for a little bit. Don't worry. It's March 25th. The final game, all right, uh, is going to – there's only two games. I won't say the final game, but there's only two games left in spring training. There's going to be the Tigers, and then the first regular season game is also against the Tigers, okay, guys? So this game right here is going to be a very tall tale sign perhaps of what's – what's to come. Although I wouldn't look at the winner and say, Hey, they're going to have the clear inside shot. It's quite possible that one of these teams are going to come in and just be like a days ago here in spring training, knowing that they play each other again in a week. Okay. Not even a week, five days. Okay, guys. So keep that in mind for, for MLB, as far as the Rays are concerned, uh, the Rays did beat the Red Sox today in spring training. That was a four to two ball game again, spring training. So it's all over the head. This is all just practice. It's all just getting better until it's time to put it on the mound. Um, the next game again against the Tigers, that game is tomorrow at 1.05 p.m. All right, guys, so listen, if you're looking for something to watch at lunchtime, spring training, uh, Rays, Tigers, it'll be a good game. And again, that is going to be a, a small precursor, not entitlement, but a small precursor to the first game of the regular season. Again, that game will be March 30th. That's a Tuesday or my bad. That's a Thursday. My apologies. It's a Thursday. And that game is going to be at 3.10 p.m. So tomorrow, 105, spring training, one other spring training game after that, and then boom, regular season starts, all right? And again, that's Thursday, March 30th, 3, 10 p.m., all right? So don't don't miss it if you if you guys want to catch it. Don't miss it. Going to have a good look at the way the team is going to look, and I think that they're going to do re really good. I can't wait to see Randy Rosarina actually go out there and, you know, start blasting it like we know he can. This guy is one of the best young players in the league, and I, I personally am very happy to have him here on the team. So go Rays. Uh, you know, raise up. We'll see you guys soon. Can't wait. I'm, uh, I'll try to catch the game tomorrow um, as well. So with that being said, a last bit for tonight, guys, uh, we got some MMA on tonight. So if you guys are any type of fans of it, like I am, the UFC does have a US, uh, UFC on ESPN tonight. Uh, there's actually a, a good card, guys. I will say that 
from my perspective, this card is actually pretty good. Bunch of good fighters fighting tonight. Um, the main event is going to be Marlon Chito Vera versus uh, Corey Sanhagen. Me and Mr. Sanhagen uh, share the same last name. I think it's spelled the exact same way, too. So, shout out to the uh, twin first namer out there. Young Cat, Marlon Chito Vera, a little bit more of a UFC vet here with the 20 wins, 7 losses, 1 no contest, okay? And uh, Sanhagen with a 15-4 and four record, no no contest. Um, my thoughts on this fight is very simple. Corey Sanhagen has tremendously crisp uh, Muay Thai skills, okay, in the pocket, outside the pocket, he's fluid, he looks like water when he's loose, however, Marlon Chito Vera has basically destroyed every fighter in front of him that fights that style, right, his style is different, his style is much more condensed, much more about making the shots that he throws land, and playing good defense, one of the things that you'll notice about him is his evolution as a fighter, as he's coming into his own, I think he's on a six fight, seven fight win streak, or something like that, guy's been lights out, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of Chito Vera, because of the fight between him and uh, Sean O'Malley, Sean O'Malley, for those of those, of those of you who do not know, is a young and up-and-coming striker at 145, a tremendous talent with wonderful skills inside the octagon. However, when he fought Marlon Chito Vera, he lost really due to injury. I think he tweaked he, he tweaked his foot or something like that. Long story short, if you guys were to watch the fight, you would see that he, he was hurt. So it wasn't a it was a win, but it's not a win that I consider a real win because you beat an injured fighter. Okay, I don't consider injury to be uh, uh, something to like play with. We've seen guys literally rip their legs and arms off in in the you know the cage. So you know, hopefully, um, it'll be a good fight. If I had to pick, woo, I'm gonna say experience takes the decision. I think Marlon Chito Vera mixes it up probably a little bit better than Corey Sanhagen does. That doesn't mean Sanhagen can't make this an early night. All right, Chito Vera does have seven losses to his record, which means there are holes in his game. Uh, those holes would probably be wrestling, um, striking. He, he's pretty confident standing up. So, you know, we'll see what happens there in that fight. Now, in the secondary fight, for those who do not know, I just want to highlight this because one Miss Holly Holm will be fighting. And for those who do not know, Holly Holm is the lady who dethroned Ronda Rousey. I was never a Ronda Rousey fan. I was a Misha Tate fan in the women's division. And when Holly Holm came up and made a fool, you guys understand me? A fool of Ronda Rousey. Um, I have to say that she became one of my favorite female fighters ever. She was a former boxing champion, so she already had good hands. But it's ironic that she would end the fight due to head kick. And a vicious one at that, guys. I encourage you to go look at that so you can see what you're getting by watching Holly Holm fight. She's a tr tremendous stand-up fighter. Has improved her ground game tremendously as well. Can't wait to see what happens there in that co-main event. She will be fighting Yana Santos, a young up-and-coming, I believe, uh, um, uh, mixed martial arts. So she does a little bit of it all. She'll strike. She'll you know go to the ground, I believe, as well. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, I'm going to pick Holly just because of the experience in the boxing. But Holly is getting older. Okay, guys, and as you guys know in martial arts, older can be a detriment, They're like a big detriment, right? We've seen that happen. We've seen these like Frank Yeager, for instance, God rest his dad. Frankie's one of your favorite fighters ever. That man on the way out of the UFC had, you know, you're picking Sanhagen that I, I, I just caught, I just thought this, you're picking Sanhagen and he was the one who retired Frankie Edgar and he retired him with a vicious knee. An absolutely, vi I, I, ooh, yeah, no, I don't want to get hit with that knee. So, uh, shout out to Sanhagen, but unfortunately, also shout out to Frank Yeager. He was a tremendous act inside the UFC, a huge UFC vet, a wonderful fighter, and I still to think to this day that he was robbed by Benson Henderson. I still don't like Benson Henderson because of that robbery. It is what it is. So, um, but congratulations to Hagen for making it this far. Marlon Chito Vera is definitely a step up in competition for him and going to be probably the hardest competition he's fought so far at 45, 145, guys. So, yes. And obviously, I, I, I definitely want to go with the experience, too, because, you know, I'll tell you this. I heard this long time ago from a martial arts coach. I think this is when I was training in Taekwondo back when I was much, much, much younger for like three months period. And my coach told me, he said, don't be ignorant to other um, martial arts styles because 
one hundred or eighty percent of fights go to the uh, go to the mat, but one hundred percent start standing up. Okay, so experience and reps are key. Absolutely, I'm gonna agree with you there, especially when you're uh, a specialist, right? So so Holly Holm, she's not gonna go to the ground. Yeah, she, she'll defend the ground game, but she's a striker, right? She's a bona fide striker. So. Uh, having having that experience and then obviously having numbers on her side that 100% of fights start standing up, I think she'll be able to edge it out even if it does go to the ground. And then for those who watched UFC 286 that had Kamaru Usman versus Leon Edwards, I scored the fight as if I was scoring it based off of how they scored in the metric. When you listen to the metric of how they score fights, it's striking, it's striking um, wrestling and grappling. And then after that, then it goes into, you know, octagon control, um, octagon uh, uh, awareness, and obviously the aggression, like who's taking the center of the octagon. When I look at how that fight went down, yes, Leon Edwards did outstrike Kamara Usman. However, however, Kamara Usman possessed the wrestling. He did get a couple of takedowns. I don't quite remember how many it was. I think it was four takedowns he got. Excuse me, guys. My apologies there. Um, I believe he got four takedowns, which th- that's scoring. I know I know. people may say, well, he didn't do much with the takedowns. Well, I, I used to say that 10 years ago. And guess what? They would still score the takedown the same way they would score a knockdown. You see what I mean? So, like, if, say, say um, um, Chuck the Iceman Liddell fought Vanderlei Silva a long time ago. Chuck said on interview, Vanderlei would be the one guy that I use my wrestling with. And he did. And as a result... It was uh, it was a 30-25 victory at the end. You see what I'm saying, guys? So you guys got to take consideration that the scoring has been evolving, and now it's evolving away from wrestling and grapplers to, you know, to striking. You look at Francis Zagan, who was the former heavyweight champion of the world. You look at Israel Adesanya, who was the former middleweight champion of the world. The, the person who beat him is a striker. Um, and then now, of course, like I said, you got um, Leon Edwards there at welterweight, and he's a striker. So there's that, guys. Um, keep it on the lookout for the next UFC event, UFC 287, I think it is going to be, yeah, Izzy Adesanya versus Alex Pineda 2 inside the UFC, this is their fourth time meeting all together, with Alex winning all three former uh, prior bouts, uh, so get ready for that, that fight's going to be absolutely nuts, guys, it's absolutely nuts, so, Thank you guys so, 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 so much for joining me here. I um, I pushed my show a little bit longer than, than I normally do. Um, I'm glad that you guys stuck with me, though. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me in this channel. Thank you for supporting IE Sports Radio and, you know, helping helping me do something I love, guys. I really appreciate you. We'll be back here same time, same place next week. If you have any questions, want to talk, sports, anything, heavy, heavily favored opinions, come find me at Twitter, at Corey Pujols. I'm always there. Running my mouth about something, guys, just like I am here. Again, I really, appre- I really appreciate the time that we spent here today, and I'll see you guys next week. Again, my name is Corey Pujols, your host for I- uh, for Palm Tree Sports, brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Have a good evening, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and stay safe. Peace.